simply won't do. This has been a terrible year, and honestly, Bah Humbug isn't doing it for me. I had initially planned on releasing a different video today, but then I realized that it probably wouldn't be done in time, and four days ago, I had a different idea. You see, what better way to celebrate a plague-ridden holiday than to make a plague-appropriate Santa Claus hat? And since I won't be able to see much of my family for the holiday season, I'll at least look pretty cool on Zoom. I've actually been wanting to make a medieval hood for a while, I just haven't gotten around to it. So I grabbed a bunch of some scraps of red wool plush, some scraps of linen, a bunch of images off of Pinterest, and two books. Uh, the Medi Medieval Textiles and Clothing, 1150 to 1450, and The Medieval Tailor's Assistant. And I started drafting a medieval hood. Will it be well researched? No. Will it be fun to sew? Yeah, definitely. So grab a cup of cocoa or eggnog and settle in as I start making up a medieval hood. After tracing my pattern pieces onto my wool fabric in chalk, I carefully cut them out. My fabric has a right side and a wrong side, so I made sure that my pieces would be mirror images of each other and that the right side would face outwards on both sides of my hood. Because I used mostly scraps for this project, I had to piece in bits of the linen lining and the wool. The seam allowances where I pieced a triangle into my wool to fill out the shape of the hood were felled down, and because this fabric is so thick, the thread buried itself in the wool and my stitches were invisible from the exterior of the hood. With everything pieced together, it was time to begin constructing my hood. Little did I know that this would not go as smoothly as I hoped. Do as I say, not as I do. Make a mock-up. I stitched along the top and back of the hood and around the lira pipe, a little under half an inch from the edge of the fabric, using spaced back stitches. This is the main construction seam of the hood, and not only do the spaced back stitches give it extra strength, I also find them easier to do than running stitches on a thick wall like this one. With the body of the hood constructed, I began felling the seam. I ironed the seam allowances flat and whip stitched it to the hood. This fabric doesn't fray much, but felling the seams in this way helps keep everything smooth from the exterior of the hood. Eventually, every seam done in the wool fabric would be felled, with the exception of the seaming in the lira pipe, which is essentially a long tube where I deemed the felling to be unnecessary. So I've never vlogged on this camera before or like recorded audio with it, so I don't know how this is going to go. But I wanted to add a little update to this video because I've most I've stitched together the hood and I've started felling the top seam up here. But um, I think that the neck bit might be a little bit tight. Like I put it on and it's a little, there's not very much room. So what I think I'm going to have to do is split open the back seam and put one of the I think it's called a godet, godet, um, that I originally had intended for the side slit. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to put that in the back and hopefully that will give it just a little bit more room to spread over my shoulders and then I'll just recut the godets, godets, again, I don't know, um, that are supposed to go on the shoulders because there's a, yeah, there's a slit on both shoulders. But, I mean, apart from the fact that I look like Aragon from <laughs> Lord of the Rings with this hood on right now. I'm pretty pleased with it. I'm excited for this thing to continue. To add volume to the back of the hood, I sadly had to rip out my seam up to the point where the godet, or possibly gore in this case, would begin. I then stitched the godet gore thing in along the seam that I had ripped out using spaced back stitches. Both of the two straight sides of the gore were stitched to the hood until the main pieces of the hood met at the tip of the gore, 
which I reinforced with a few extra stitches. Because I had used one of the original godets to add volume to the back of the hood, I had to recut them. This time, I made my godets larger, shaped more like quarter circles, where the previous godets were eighth circles. These were stitched in similarly to the gore at the back of the hood, but I tapered off the seam allowance to nearly nothing at the point of the godet. Once all of the godets and gores were inserted, I finished felling the interior seams. Next, I hemmed around the bottom of the cape of the hood and around the edge that will surround my face. The neck closure, where the buttons will be added, was not hemmed for two reasons. The first being that I was concerned that a concave curve would be nigh impossible to hem, and the second being that I intend to eventually finish this edge with a tablet woven hem, once I do more research and acquire the supplies. With everything hemmed and felled, I began to insert the lining. When worn, the front of the hood can be folded back, exposing the white lining, much like the white trim on a Santa hat. First, I pinned in place my large lining piece, which was shaped like the main body of the hood with slits to spread over the godets. I used a slip stitch to attach the lining to the bottom of the hood, then around the neck and face. Because the neck of the hood is not hemmed, I made sure that my slip stitches were close together at this part of the lining to add a little bit of extra strength in this area. I forgot to film this step, but I also stitched the lining to the back seam of the hood using the same techniques. Once the main body of the lining was stitched into the hood, I lined the gore and the godets. Folding under the edges of each gore or godet, I pinned them in place and stitched them to the lining, ensuring that all of the raw edges of the lining were hidden and creating a clean interior. The last stage of making this hood was to add a button closure. I could have used metal buttons, but I didn't have any, so instead I made some medieval buttons. These are made by cutting a circle of fabric, the size of which will depend on the desired size of your button and the thickness of the fabric, and stitching around the circle near the edge with basting stitches. It's best to use a heavier weight or doubled thread here, as this process can snap a finer thread. This circle of stitching was gathered until the circle doubled in on itself, forming a smaller circle. It should look almost like a fabric-covered disc-shaped button. The gathering thread was then stitched around the edge of this smaller circle, pulling it in and making a hemisphere shape. I then stitched across the base of the hemisphere, gathering it in until my button was nearly spherical. After knotting the thread, I cut the thread several inches away from my button. It is important to leave enough excess thread to be able to stitch the buttons to the garment later. I would recommend leaving a tail of at least 6 to 8 inches. Once the buttons were made, I stitched 7 buttonholes in silk twist. These are stitched close to the edge of the neck of the hood and are just wide enough to squeeze the buttons through. I had originally planned on doing 9 buttonholes, but decided against that because the two closest to my face seemed unnecessary and because the ugly underside of those buttonholes would be more visible when the hood is worn un unbuttoned. Thank you. 
Last, I stitched on the buttons using the long tail of thread that was attached to each. After knotting the thread once the button was stitched on, I drew the thread through the button and clipped it off, securing the tail of the thread. I might redo these buttons and add thread shanks, but until I do that, these will work. The hood buttons up under the chin. It can be worn open, partially buttoned, fully buttoned, or with the edge of the hood unfolded for extra protection from the cold. My hair right now is a little bit too short for a proper medieval style, but I intend on wearing this hood with my modern clothes regardless. Luckily for me, the hood is roomy enough for medieval hairstyles, so when my hair is just a little bit longer, and when my medieval dress, which has been languishing nearly finished in a bag since this summer, is done, it will be fun to style this hood a little bit more historically. And there you have it, a medieval-ish Santa hat. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was super tempted to put a pom-pom on the end of the lira pipe, but A, I didn't wanna make a pom-pom, I was a little lazy for that, <laughs> and B, I don't think that would be super historical, but oh well. N jokes aside, 2020 has been exhausting and you're doing amazing for just making it through. I hope that if you have the resources and time, you consider helping out local food banks or mutual aid organizations this holiday season. A lot of people are really struggling and those groups are volunteer run and they can often get resources to people who need them the fastest. Thank you again for watching. Thank you to Ollie for their help in filming and editing some of this video. And I hope that you have a happy holiday season. Bye.